Hi everyone, this is Honeywell, and I am playing Banished. Um, at the very beginning, I've generated a world. Let's go ahead and uh, get the details of that world. Um, it's map seed 748114924. As you can see, it's valleys, large. Uh, the climate is fair, disasters are on, and the starting conditions are hard. Um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to rename this world The Perfect Town. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and rename it because that's the goal. I want to create the perfect town. And of course, Banished is a sandbox, a true sandbox city builder, uh, so there is no really there isn't any one perfect town or perfect setup, but this is just what I'm going for. I want a large, high population map, and I want to start it from the beginning with that in mind. I'm, extre I'm extremely familiar with Vanish, by the way. Um, I've received all of the achievements, so I'm familiar with the game mechanics. Um, you're not going to see or at least I hope you're not going to see uh, huge starvation issues and that sort of thing. This town will definitely get off the ground. There's no doubt about that. But whether it turns out to be as perfect as I want it to be or not, that is up for debate. Okay, so a uh, brand new town. I am familiar with this map seed. I haven't played it, um, but I did generate did generate a map with the intention of recording it and I want the perfect town so I was laying out all the roads and where what I'm gonna do with each area and I was deciding okay I'm gonna have a forest over here and another forest here and this is where I'm gonna set up my little uh, trading empire it's gonna be over here and I spent absolutely hours literally hours with the game paused just like this building my town but when I went to go to start playing even though I had uh, deleted the roads because I had saved so many times I deleted all the roads had all the buildings paused but because I had saved so many times my citizens were running off to uh, to build and destroy invisible roads and it was just a mess. So I had to go ahead and start over from the beginning. But I did keep the randomly, um, the random map seat that I was given. I think this, it's actually a really nice map. Well, you can't really go wrong with a valley, with a large valley uh, map. There's going to be, there's going to be a lot of options when you go with something like that. A lot of resources, um, a lot of flat land. But what's really nice about this is that while there's um, mountains in the way, uh, the flat areas are, are truly flat. Well, from what I've seen. And I have, I have planned out what I want to do with this town. Uh, I want some pastures over here. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this area over there. Okay, I've mostly planned it out. I thought about maybe some uh, trading docks over there, but I do know absolutely how I'm going to start. So how about I stop talking and I do that? One of the first things that I like to do is... is get a feel for get a feel for the land mark out any um, any mountains or that sort of thing so right there so I'll use my uh, rolled my road tool in order to do that A 
I want nice straight roads that are easy to pave and easy for my citizens to travel from one end of the map to the other uh, once we reach the end game. So to that effect, I'm making sure that, okay, I have a market, or I'm gonna have a market down here. And eventually, not for a long time, I'm going to uh, expand down to this area. And because of that, I'm gonna want a tunnel here. But what I found is that once you build up your town, um, roads and buildings can get in the way of placing tunnels and bridges where right now, while I have a completely undeveloped map, um, I have no problem putting in uh, road, roads, tunnels, bridges, wherever I want them to be. Um, if I don't build it and keep it paused, that might not be the case later on. And again, what I'm doing is, is framing out these mountains because I want to know exactly how much, how much buildable, buildable area I have here. Okay, I'm a big fan of, uh, of straight lines. And well, another way that you could do you could do is you could um, you could take your tool and then use your shift key and you could kind of outline the mountains that way uh, that's not really useful you don't build in jagged lines everything in the game is square so it makes sense to me to square off around these obstacles and then that still leaves plenty of room to maybe put some houses uh, inside of these while well, still letting me know how much actual buildable, buildable space that I have. Okay. So if I'll see this right here. So it looks like I'm gonna wanna move my marketplace down just a tad. And again, using those, these lines, I want perfect, perfectly square. Uh, let's see, right there. Leave I want that right there. And again with the tunnels, uh, tunnels are not my first priority, obviously. But I'm planning my my town from the start with what I'm going to want towards the end game. So with that in mind, I want all my tunnels in place. I'm also going to check my spacing here for. Uh, four houses. Okay, good. And I'm going to go ahead and use my remove road tool just to see what I have kind of laid out here. And as you can see, I do have uh, two, two squares going on here. Very nice. Let's see. And 
this way. It makes this really hard in the beginning when there's so many resources everywhere. And that way. Okay, it looks good. I have a, a nice grid system set up here. Uh, when I do eventually uh, stone these roads, it'll be good. And we have clearly, I have outlined kind of clearly a game plan here. On the left side of the map is going to be a forest hub, and on the right side of these in these squares is going to be a forest hub. And we're off to a good start. Placing the schoolhouse. That's something that is a bit, a bit unusual. Um, the schoolhouse is actually going to be the very first building that I place, that I build on this map. Which is a little out of the ordinary. Uh, but that will be for the the next episode. I'm actually not going to um, play the game today. I'm just laying out the the town and getting all the buildings all the buildings in place. With Banish, the the key to an efficient town is the building placement. First and foremost, you need to place your buildings uh, in an area where they'll, they'll, do, they'll do the job that you need them to do. So the gatherer's hut uh, needs to go in a forest. Uh, forester lads needs to be in some land where it can work and plant trees and cut them down. And most important, more important than anything else, is putting the proper support buildings for these production buildings in order for them to work. And that means storage barns and stockpiles. More important than close housing for productivity and efficiency is having storage barns near where these buildings are placed and stockpiles depending on the type of building so throughout throughout this playthrough you're gonna see that uh, if you're new to banish actually I'll link um, there's a couple good good kind of beginning beginning tutorials for Banished, and I'll go ahead and link them in this description once I finally get these, uh, these uploaded to YouTube. So if you're absolutely new, there's a few, a few that might help you out, more so than this. Seven by seven seems good.
Okay, now this might be hard to see, but we'll go ahead and uh, pause everything for good effect here. And this is just about what, when I say that I'm setting up a forest hub, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, basically, there'll be a uh, gatherer's hut, a forester's lodge, a storage barn, a hunting cabin, a woodcutter, set up next to a stockpile. I also like to include at least six houses um, in order to accommodate the people working at these places. A gatherer's hut can have a maximum of four, a forester's four, so that's eight people working here, plus three for the hunting cabin and one for the uh, woodcutter is, is 12 jobs. And I have six houses to staff those 12 jobs, so, so we're doing good. Now, as weird as it sounds, since I went to the trouble of setting all of that up, I am going to go ahead and delete these buildings because I'm not ready for this section yet. The only thing that I was concerned about is the stockpile placement uh, because I'm going to need that stockpile and I don't want to have to move it again later. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side of town. Again, it would be nice if I could actually, uh, if I could actually see here. I imagine this video is going to be absolutely boring for a lot of people, but that's okay. Um, not a Let's Player. Well, I guess, actually, since this is a Let's Play, I can't really say that anymore, but... This isn't something that I, uh that I normally do. I've been playing a lot of Banished since uh, since The Sims 4 came out because that was such a disappointment. Well, it was a disappointment for me. I know there's a lot of uh, really smart, smart, talented uh, Simmers out there enjoying the game, but unfortunately I'm not one of them. So I've been playing Banished. Okay, it looks like I have the six houses. Built. And now let's get the production buildings down. My barn to go for my hunting cabin. And my gatherer's hut. Get the forester lodge in. Oh, you know, actually, I wanted a space. In between my houses. I want that space because in the late game, 
you're constantly placing houses and just in case I need to place more houses in this area I want a space um, for road so if I need to I can place additional houses behind those houses that I already have planned out that's but then again that's something for the future uh, towards the end game You can never have enough storage and never have enough houses. That is that is the end game in Banished. And if there was one thing that I think that's one weak point with the game. That there's no real end game content. And I don't mean that I don't want the game to be a sandbox because because that's not the case at all. Uh, what I mean by that is, what I mean by end game content is there's, what you do in the beginning at this stage continues until the end never changes. The only way to expand your population is to, is to build houses. So even though once you get to the end game and your uh, map is completely full, there's no, there's no uh, additional buildings that might facilitate the change, the change in gameplay. Um, so you don't have to constantly keep building new houses in order to maintain your, po your population. And that's just all I meant by by that but even with that I think this is a fantastic game I'm gonna get my woodcutter up and then my stockpile in the space that's left Seven by five seems good. Okay, and so we have our uh, markets radius, and the reason why I I group my houses. Uh, at the end is in order you don't just need your production houses your production buildings uh, to be efficient you also need your houses to be efficient and in order for your houses to be efficient they need access to schools that we have paused right here and marketplaces because your houses are going to need food and they're going to need a wide variety of food in order to be healthy um, so even though the market is something that I'm not going to be building for a long time, um, eventually I will be building marketplaces and I will be building trade routes and I'm going to want these houses to have access um, to, to those goods once they start flowing in, in the city. In the early game, this is absolutely uh, fine working with what we have in the in the area but in the end game which is what I'm planning for I want everyone to have uh, markets within the radius and access to schools so the houses can be efficient okay I'm kind of losing my train of thought here I'm gonna go ahead and and cut this video off right here and then we'll go ahead and start over with episode number two, where I'll actually play the game. And you'll get to see the, the unusual start that, that I have, where we're going to go ahead and be building this schoolhouse first. Okay, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hopefully, as, as the series goes on, I'll improve. And one thing, 
no matter how this is received, if anyone watches it or not, if you start, know that I'm going to finish. So you'll go ahead and see how the perfect town turns out. Okay, thanks again for watching, and we'll be back with episode number two.